In fact, gender can consist of a million different factors and is different for everyone. With time and simplicity, we can break these boundaries down into three distinct spectrums. The gender red person, as you can see on the screen, can be used to represent them. I'm Bryony and I use she, her friends. These three spectrums consist of both sex, gender identity, and expression. The first we're going to discuss is birth sex, as it's the most binary of the three, and therefore the easiest to understand. On the gender birth person, birth sex is represented by the gen gender symbol between the letters. Birth sex refers to the chromosomal, hormonal, and anatomical characteristics that classify and identify our sex at birth. On one side, we have female, and on the other side, we have male each one corresponding with the body parts most traditionally associated with them. Each sex symbol is born with some combination of chromosomes, gonads, hormones, internal sex organs, and ambiguous genitalia. They are often forced through painful surgeries as young children to correct their bodies, so it is important to acknowledge the common One in 1,000 people are intersex. That may sound like a small number, but that's more people born intersex than people born with cystic fibrosis, a fairly common illness. In fact, that makes the number of people born intersex on par with the number of residents, so it's pretty significant. Birth sex is no one's business but yours and your doctor's, and possibly your partner's. The next spectrum we have is gender identity, represented by the brain on the gender person. Gender identity is the perception one has of their gender, their personal concept of being a woman, man, both, or neither. It is a remarkably fluid spectrum, and easily the most significant of them all. In one corner are the people who identify as women, and on the other are the people who identify as men. In the top corner are those who identify as neither. In between those corners are non-binary people, people who identify as both, or neither in varying degrees of masculinity and femininity. An important word to remember is cisgender. Cisgender is when a person's gender identity is the same as their birth sex. While we won't go into specific details of non-binary identities, some examples include agender, gender fluid, gender queer, bigender, trigender, or demigender. Any person who identifies as something other than cisgender falls under the trans umbrella and can use transgender as a general term for their identity. This is the part where many people tend to get lost. How can there be genders other than men and women? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense at first glance. However, let's really think about this together. For me, I don't really feel like a girl. That confused me for a long time. I'm clearly female body. How can't I feel like a girl? After a lot of thought, I realized I don't particularly feel like a boy either. Both of those extremes felt very uncomfortable. Then I found a label that does suit me, gender fluid. This means I'm not a boy and I'm not a girl. I'm somewhere in the spectrum in between. Does that make sense? Consider yourself. Do you feel like a man, a woman? Most of you are probably very conscious of the fact that yes, I do feel like a woman or man. But for some of you, maybe not, maybe both. This is where one poses a question, or a woman, or anyone really. And then you can see just how inaccurate a binary really is. Everything overlaps. A good way to think of gender is to consider yourself. For many of us, the knowledge that you are a man or a woman is simple fact. It's very easy to tell your identity. It's clear, and you just know. You just feel it. It's innate knowledge that you simply are that gender. It's the same idea with gender non-conforming individuals. You very simply know, though it might take a little longer to realize. For many people, their gender identity fluctuates over time. It's a fluid thing. Two years ago, you may have identified as gender fluid, but today you have realized you're actually a man. Fluidity does not devalue one's identity. It simply shows that gender is, in fact, not binary. Sometimes it's hard to find labels that fit well. Some prefer to say, I'm not cisgender, and leave it to that. Some people don't like to assign the label to themselves. 
myself at home. Speaking of themselves, a very personal and very significant part of being transgender is pronouns. You may have heard of preferred pronouns. This is a misleading name for them. If a student asks you to use a particular set of pronouns, you should use those pronouns. It is up to the person what pronouns they use, not the speaker. Someone may change, pro may change pronouns from he to she, or she to they, or they may switch between pronouns. Personally, I use they, that pronouns, and in official situations, she, her. Both of them are acceptable, and I feel they represent my gender identity. As a community, we often get the question, how do you use the correct pronouns for someone who isn't out to everyone? This is most prominent in places like school. Kids may be out to their teachers, but not to their parents. In this situation, it's best to ask them who knows that they're out or when to use which of the pronouns. Once you know this, simply use their correct pronouns around those who know, and their assigned pronouns around those who don't. On the topic of personal questions, we want to resolve another problem that trans people often run into. There's a very distinct difference between information that needs to be disclosed for the health and safety of the student and information that will simply satisfy curiosity. Gender is a very new topic, and it's perfectly all right to have questions. However, this topic is also very personal. <coughs> Just like any cisgendered person's person, a trans person's body is their personal business. Gender identity is not caused by set, birth sex and genitalia. Similarly, gender identity does not cause gender expression, a third spectrum represented by the outline on the gender. Expression is how one presents themselves. Clothing, makeup, and colors have no gender. Boys, whether cisgender or transgender, can wear skirts or dresses and still be boys. Girls can wear suits and ties and still be girls. A gender people who identify as genderless can dress hyperfeminine or hypermasculine and still be a gender. That completes the gender portion of the gender red person, but there's one more spectrum we feel we should talk about, sexual orientation. This spectrum encompasses romantic and sexual orientation. Sorry. <laughs> um, encompasses romantic and sexual orientation, what gender or genders one is attracted to. Attraction is unrelated to gender. Being a girl doesn't mean you feel attraction to boys. Being non-binary doesn't mean you feel attraction to girls. We want to make it very clear that gender and, gender and orientation are not caused by one another. On a related note, we would also like to make it clear that a transgender woman who likes other women can still be a lesbian. A transgender man who likes other men can still be gay. When labeling orientation, gender identity is used, not birth sex. However, remember, labels are used to describe an individual in a way that makes them comfortable. So it's really up to the individual what label they use. Let's take a moment to review what we just went over. We know it's a lot of information for all of us to digest at one time. Gender can be roughly broken down into three spectrums, birth sex, gender identity, and expression. Birth sex and genitalia do not cause identity. Identity does not always line up with expression. Your romantic and sexual orientation are not caused by your gender identity either. What we really want everyone to take away today is this. Gender is evolving. Gender is a spectrum. And we're hopeful that everyone can respect and <laughs> We really believe that we can make a difference in our school, as well as in our community. We place things in boxes because it is in our nature. It's the way our brains work. But it's time we move past this. No more strictly drawn boxes. We can all respect one another, and now we can use our open hearts and open minds to understand one another as well as we all grow into our identity. So, so at the back of your packets, we've included a copy of um, our district's um, transgender and gender non policy. So Great Valley's made incredible strides for the students. We're actually the first district in Pennsylvania to have a transgender and gender non I wanted to talk about this briefly, as we're sure most of you have already heard about. The policy states that it is the district's job to provide an equal opportunity for all students to reach maximum potential, regardless of the individual's gender, gender
gender identity, or gender expression. We've already included many of the topics addressed in the policy in this presentation, so we won't go into too much detail. The policy contains nine sections. We want to discuss those we feel require extra explanation. Section A very simply states that a student's gender status is personal and may not be disclosed to a third party without the student's approval. Section C says that the students have the right to be addressed by their affirmed name and pronouns. A student's preferred name and pronouns should be used in most situations, with the notable exception of legal forms and standardized tests. One of the most publicized issues with the introduction of transgender policies in schools has been restroom accessibility. We, in section D, the policy states that students have the right to use the bathroom corresponding to the gender they, gender they consistently identify as. We'd like to take a moment here to make a brief comment on bathrooms. I know it seems like such a small thing, a very short part of our day, and it's been talked to death. Many feel it has been overemphasized. However, I want you to think back to high school, even beyond high school. Most of us are probably pretty self-confident and self-assured now. However, I want you to think back to the last time you felt people staring at you. The last time you had a rumor spread about you over the butt of a joke. I want you to remember how uncomfortable it felt. It's hard not to obsess over it, to turn it over and over in your head. Suddenly, every time you hear laughter, it feels like it's directed at you. Now I want you to imagine this happening every time you went to the bathroom. The fact is, this is a time when we are very vulnerable. So while it feels unimportant to those of us who don't give our personal business a second thought, for a trans kid, it can be a blow when you are most vulnerable. It's one of the most basic forms of acceptance and understanding. And we need to protect all of our students, whether cis or transgender. Moving back to policy, Locker rooms will be treated similarly to the bathrooms. Transgender students may use the locker room that applies to their gender identity, and special arrangements can be made with administration to ensure the safety and integration of the student. The final thing we want to speak to is section H. It, this section states that in activities separated by gender, a student may participate in accordance with their gender identity. However, it also recommends that activities be separated when possible by factors other than gender. We are very proud of our school for enacting this policy and hope we felt we've helped to demystify how this will affect our school. Now I would like to invite Bryony and Tara to talk about health and gender. A big issue for many transgender youth is mental health. Mental health is defined as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes their own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to their community. Transgender youth are at higher risk of developing mental health problems, and as the definition would suggest, this often prevents transgender students from realizing and achieving their full potential. The most common form of this takes is gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is a condition where a person experiences discomfort or distress because there is a mismatch between their sex and their gender identity. Gender dysphoria can cause restlessness, anxiety, and depression. The discomfort caused by gender dysphoria can be such an intense feeling that it interferes with the ability to function in everyday situations like social activities and school. If a student comes to you and talks to you about gender dysphoria, or says they are struggling with dysphoria, the most important step is to accept. Listen to the student, ask appropriate questions, and support their choice to talk to you. Tell the student their feelings are valid and their identity is valid. Studies show that in order to learn, a student must feel safe. Human psychology dictates that we cannot achieve higher thinking and education unless our basic needs of safety are already met. Dysphoria is often paired with intense feelings of anxiety and panic, which keeps these basic needs from being met, and the whole learning system falls apart. Simply listening and validating <coughs> these feelings can make a whole world of difference to their learning ability. Gender dysphoria in adolescents usually persists long term. While the symptoms of dysphoria can be treated with counseling and similar courses, 
it's important to remember the root cause of the dysphoria. Dysphoria stems from what you see in the mirror and how others see you, not lining up with what you experience and understand yourself to be. Your gender identity is very deeply ingrained uh, in who you are, which unfortunately can make dysphoria very difficult to cast aside. Beyond dysphoria and its symptoms, transgender students face, face other mental and physical health risks. Transgender adolescents are in danger of substance abuse, suicidal thoughts and behaviors, and high risk behaviors. In transgender studies, 25% of survey respondents reported the misuse or abuse of drugs and or alcohol specifically to help cope with the effects of discrimination. 41% of transgender people in the United States have attempted suicide. This is 25 times the rate of the national population, which is only 1.6%. These are very serious problems which demand action and attention. However, 19% of transgender people have been refused medical care because of their gender identity, and 2% have been assaulted in doctor's offices. This is an unfamiliar topic for many of us. So, it's important to discuss how we move forward from here. How can we make our classrooms an ideal learning environment? We can start by avoiding the use of gender language and groups by gender. Having a review game be boys versus girls presents a problem for transgender or non-binary kids. Rather than addressing the class as ladies and gentlemen, try class or students. It's a small change that can make a large difference. Using statements like, girls, you know what I'm talking about, or I need three strong boys to carry these textbooks, can have a negative effect on historic students and accent the idea of a binary. If it's possible, ensure that substitute teachers don't use a student's old name. As we said, pronouns and chosen or firm names are very important. While you do know to use a student's preferred name, leaving a note for a substitute substitute can save both teacher and student a lot of embarrassment and explaining. The most important thing you can do is be supportive of students and make sure they feel safe and comfortable in the classroom. All students deserve to be in a learning environment where they feel safe, heard, and respected. By using the correct pronouns and names, avoiding gendered language, and avoiding activities which rely on a gender binary, we can create an environment in which we all have an equal opportunity to learn. We will now have a couple of personal stories. Hey there. Um, you may not know this about me, but I'm Elijah, and I'm a trans boy. Um, about a month ago, it was prom season, and my mom and I went dress shopping for junior prom. I tried on a dress, and I looked great in it, but I didn't feel comfortable in it. I looked at myself in the mirror, and I really didn't feel like I was representing who I am. We decided to go suit shopping next. I tried on a suit, and I felt amazing in it. I looked good, and I felt great. On the car ride home, my mom said to me, I understand that you're a boy, but I think you're a very gay boy. <laughs> um, she then went on to say that even though you identify as male, you don't have to give up all the feminine things that you love. And I really love that she said that to me. That's very supportive to me. I then went to prom in, in makeup and heels, and I looked awesome. <laughs> the thing is, students may identify as male or female, but they may not dress the, the way. They may not dress stereotypically male, but they may not dress stereotypically female. It's how they want to express themselves. And I'm really happy that I can speak in front of all of you and tell you this. Growing up transgender makes school especially difficult. 
Everyone is figuring themselves out, and the pressure to not only know who you are, but be someone that everyone will accept is one of the most terrifying things for a young man to The fear of being separated by gender in class, having to use school locker rooms and school bathrooms, and even pushing yourself to come to school are only some of the many struggles that I and other trans students feel. What I want to accomplish by telling you the story is not to make you feel bad or feel sad, but to let you know what it's really like for some of the students and to know that being transgender is not only an at home struggle. It's present at school and it's our job as a school to make the student less of a struggle for these kids going through the school. talked about a lot today, so we want to close this conversation by talking about how we can implement our knowledge into the class. We begin with avoiding assumptions. As humans, we naturally want to label things, but as we've learned, people don't always align with our perceptions of them. People are incredibly diverse, and we should celebrate that, that diversity by being inclusive to all, regardless of gender. Especially in high school, jokes about the LGBT community run rampant and are often left unaddressed. Yet, imagine a trans student sitting in class, their identity turned into the punchline of the trip. Confidentiality is key. None of us can assume that a student being out means that they are out to everyone in their life. Gender identity is a very personal thing, and it's often scary to come out. Many times students will come out to their friends and teachers, but not yet out to their family. Again, we need to be careful and respect confidentiality. Trans people frequently share that figuring out how they identify was a scary and isolating experience. Think about how much we could change that if we were just willing to listen. So sit with students. Every experience is unique, and the only way to understand it is to talk about it. Knowledge that none of us know everything about gender. As we've said, every experience is incredibly unique to each person. We have, e we have each spent most of our year learning everything we can about gender in order to share our learnings with you. And we are nowhere near knowing all that we can possibly know about this vast topic. The most important thing is to be willing to learn. Again, labeling can be detrimental. We classify things in order to understand them more easily. However, there's a really simple alternative, just ask. It can be as simple as asking for someone's name. For example, hi, I'm Jack, I use he and pronouns, and you? And it's also important to remember that the way one dresses does not equate to everything. Finally, keep it on the mind. You're coming to you today in order to try and better our community and our class. Each of us deserves things, a safe place to learn, regardless of gender identity, pronoun, and gender expression. This can only be realized from collective effort by both students and faculty. We would like to thank you for taking this time to listen to us. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. We will ask one more thing from you. Carry what we've talked about today to the classroom here and help make our school better.
a student will tell you, you can ask, who are you out to? Who can I use your um, preferred pronouns with? Mm -hmm. And the student will generally say, um, I'm out to my friends but not my family, um, just to specifically know when to use preferred pronouns and when to use assigned pronouns. Does that help? So that along that same line um, in learning what the preferred pronoun is, is that something we should, at the beginning of the year, ask students for preferred pronouns? Should we wait for students to come to us with it? I mean, how should we learn the preferred pronoun, I guess? It's, um, it's a great idea, um, especially, we kind of discussed this with activities in the beginning of the year. A lot of times we'll get, get to know new activities, but um, you'll say your name and you can just right. add pronoun and those who have preferred pronouns will immediately get it and they will be actually very happy to know that they have teachers who know what pronouns are and it will make them a lot more comfortable in the classroom. Mm -hmm. or I know sometimes mm -hmm. teachers have students fill out like little index cards right, right. and if you wanted to put that as something like under the things you need to know about me that's another way they might tell you. So that's a welcome thing. I, I don't, you wouldn't want to put someone on the spot yeah. either in a sense, yeah. but that would be fine to just include that. It's generally students who are comfortable with being out will put their preferred right. pronouns right. if the student is still figuring themselves out. Generally, they might not share their preferred right. pronouns. Right. Just including that. Including it can make a huge difference. Okay. Thank you. I have a friend who identifies as nine bot. Nine bot non-binary and before they was they, I knew him as him. And one of the things I found that my biggest struggle was adapting to the they them pronoun because um, we in English you know we assign singular pronouns to a, a noun. So is there anything that, I don't know, any advice? I, I, I literally just use it, I just say, well, see, there you go. I use it, I say heaven, because I, I, I mess up my head all the time. Could you maybe give any advice to the faculty? Because I still struggle with this as well. So something that I used before when I'm using this word, not when I struggle with those pronouns, is I just use them um, in a sentence. Like I say, um, my friend um, Jeffrey, he, he likes, his, he him his pronouns. He is very fun to hang out with. Um, I just you just sort of think about um, sentences that might use their pronouns, and that might help you to get that thinking going and using it in normal situations. Okay, so process. That's good advice. Thank you. It's also just to know that it's okay to mess up. Like yeah. we yeah. all do it. Just, I yeah. still mess up people's pronouns. Yeah. It's it's completely natural. We're kind of changing the way we think about it. So it is perfectly okay to mess up. Just Call me, just apologize, and just move on. Don't make a big deal about yeah, it. I continue to do. <laughs> <laughs> so this is names. Um, and I have some of you in class. Um, in regards to Skyward, I wouldn't have known some of the names. And and I, I wouldn't even probably have known to ask. <coughs> is, is there something to tell us that or um well typically in the beginning of the year um teachers will ask if you have a big name like say what it is and students that will like students that do feel comfortable like telling their teachers that they go by the name that they can tell you and um i think that if you find out somehow that the name is going by <coughs> Obviously, um, they cannot change your name on legal documents. 
and standardized tests. But um, I believe it is in we have a lot to figure out yet. Yeah, it's really new. There's definitely a lot to figure out.